Limoncello, one of, if not the most popular Italian liqueurs. And yet, very, very few people have ever had the real thing. The reason I say that is because Limoncello is really a homemade product. If you buy it in a store or get it at a restaurant, chances are it will be far too sweet and sugary. It's like drinking candy, which is fine if you like that, but that's not really what most Italians would consider to be good limoncello. This applies in Italy too. Even if you get it at a restaurant, it's still not very good. We mentioned this in a previous video and ever since we've gotten a lot of requests uh, for a limoncello recipe, how to make limoncello at home. We've been putting it off for a while because there's actually a pretty good reason why a lot of people maybe might not want to make limoncello at home. Here's what we decided to do. We decided to show how to make limoncello. Ava will show you the whole process so you can do it at home. But then we're also going to explain why you might not want to and present some examples of alternatives that are perhaps easier for you to make and maybe even better. The first step, when you make limoncello at home, if you decide to make it, is to extract the essence of the lemon from the lemon. And in order to do this, what you need is lemon and alcohol. This is what in Italy we call pure alcohol. In English, you call grain alcohol. This is 95%. Today, I'm going to use 10 lemons for a liter of pure alcohol. The ratio here is one lemon for 100 milliliters of alcohol. The only part that we will need from the lemon is the yellow peel, which means that we need to peel our lemon, but be being very, very uh, cautious to not having any white part because otherwise your limoncello will be bitter so you need something like that if accidentally you cut a little bit of the uh, the white part don't worry because you can always scrape it after we peeled all the lemons that, that we need, we need a, how do you see? A jar. A jar, yes, but a jar that closes very, very well. How do you call it? A jar that closes very, very well. Oh, man. We place all the peel in the jar. And now we pour in some pure alcohol. As we said before, we are going to use one liter. We close it and close it very, very well. You shake a little bit just to be sure that all the lemon peel are in contact with the alcohol. And now is the moment in which we need a lot of patience because we are going to store it for at least 25 days in a cool place, prefer preferably, uh, it's better if the cool place is also a dark place. Once a day, once every two days, you remember to have your limoncello there and what you do is shake it a little bit. The lemon are done soaking, but we still don't have the real limoncello. So today we need to make it. To make the limoncello, what we need is some water and sugar. For a liter of alcohol, this, I'm going to use 750 ml of water plus 500 grams of sugar. And we are going to prepare a very simple syrup. What we are looking for here is just to make uh, the sugar completely melt in the water. The other step is uh, to drain uh, the lim limoncello. It's not limoncello yet, our alcohol. Through a sifter, through a cheesecloth, whatever you have. Now is 
is the moment in which we need the, to let the syrup completely cool down and then we can add our lemon flavor ethanol. Now the only thing that we need to do is put the limoncello in the bottle. So now our limoncello is done. But before we can enjoy it, we need to wait at least another month. Because right now we have this strong taste of alcohol that doesn't make the limoncello good. Passing 30 days, 35, 40 days, it will be more, how do you say? Mellow. Yes, more limoncello. And we have our limoncello, homemade limoncello. I can't wait because I know how much a good homemade limoncello is good. Because if you drink it in a restaurant, you end up drinking just sugar. But if you make a tomma. And the nice thing about making it at home is you can control the amount of sugar. So if you tend to like it sweeter, you can. But if you tend like us to like it a bit stronger, a bit more lemony, less sugary, you can do it that way. It's important to know also, um, uh, this should be served ice cold. So keep it in See, the freezer. And actually this is also a trick to understand if uh, it's made with alcohol or not. Because if it's just water and sugar, it will be... It'll freeze. <laughs> yes, if there is the alcohol, it doesn't freeze. Chin chin. <laughs> I was going to say buon appetito. <laughs> No, because you did a good job. It didn't freeze, so we're actually going to drink this. Chin chin. <laughs> chin chin. Ah, that's a good limoncello. It's sweet, but like just the right amount. It doesn't taste like candy. It tastes like lemon. It's strong, but not too much, but also not too little. It's too good. <laughs> as delicious as that is, though, there is a reason why you might not want to or might not be able to make limoncello at home. And that mostly has to do with the lemons. Yes, because to make limoncello at home, you need to be sure 100% that you have organic lemon. Otherwise, you, are, uh, you will end up drinking a mixture of preservative and pesticide and all that. You can make limoncello at home if your lemons are 100% organic. And just to clarify, that does not mean purchased at the store where Absolutely. it says organic. I grew up on an organic farm. Uh, I think organic farming is great, but organic does not mean that they don't use pesticides. There are organic approved pesticides. And the problem specifically with citrus is that they don't grow lemons expecting people to make a highly concentrated tincture using just the outside of the peel, the part that is exposed to pesticides. You never know for sure from lemon to lemon, but if you buy a lemon that says organic, it doesn't mean that there isn't some pretty nasty stuff on the outside of it uh, that you can't just get rid of by washing. Obviously, it's your body, your kitchen, you're free to do whatever you want, but the general rule of thumb in Italy is to only make limoncello with lemons that like, you know where they came from. They're homegrown lemons. You grew them in your backyard. Your neighbor grew them. That's why we frankly rarely make limoncello here because we don't have lemons or anything. It was our good friends, uh, Jeff and Cheryl. Thank you guys. They gave us some homegrown lemons. Um, so generally speaking, you only want to do this with homegrown lemons. However, the basic process of making limoncello can also be applied to things other than lemons. Things that, well, you should, should still look for the organic version, but they're products that are meant to be eaten. So hopefully they're we don't really treated in a way that. where they're a bit safer than just lemon rind. So now we are going to make some of the other uh, cellos. Cellos? <laughs> That they are made with other things, uh, and maybe you can like them also more than uh, limoncello by itself. But before we do, if you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up. It helps us out a lot. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. All right, let's make some cellos. 
one of the hundreds of thousands of things that maybe, maybe, that for sure make, uh, makes Italy a very famous place is for sure coffee. But not because we grow our own coffee, we don't grow coffee in Italy, but because with our coffee, that is the best in the world, we make tiramisu, we make the cookies, and we can make also a very good homemade liqueur. Starting from the chicchi di caffè. Now, how do you call them? Coffee beans. Coffee beans. To make your coffee, we call it rosolio di caffè. Yeah, but we're gonna call it coffee cello. Cafe cello. Did <laughs> we give a name to it? Cafe cello. Ca co coffee cello. <laughs> Cafe cello, just very bad. Anyway, in order to make this, what you need is coffee beans and alcohol. And you need also this amazing tool. I assume you're not trying to pulverize them completely, otherwise you would just use a coffee grinder. Bravo, Alfred. You're a smart guy. We need just to break them a little bit. After we mash the, the coffee beans, I'm going to add the half liter of pure alcohol because in this case I'm going to make like half portion. I used 200 grams of coffee beans and I'm going to use 500 ml of pure alcohol. going to treat this uh, as we treated the limoncello. The only difference is that uh, with the coffee we are going to make it uh, infuse uh, for about a week. And then we will make a syrup with water and sugar. I'm using 650 ml of water and 500 grams of sugar. It smells like coffee. We need to let it uh, sleep for 30 days. Most of you, if I show this, uh, that is ginger, you don't think about Italian food. Actually, in the past, ginger was used a lot in all our food. And one of the leftover things from the past is the liqueur made with ginger. So we are going to make a... I have a name here. You do? Si, a gingerello. Gingerello? <laughs> you should know that the Italian-American immigrants, the Italians, when they came here to America and then they went back to Italy, they start to call, to call a Sprite gingerella. <laughs> because you have actually here in America ginger ale. But their pronunciation from ginger ale went to gingerella, so we are going to make it with gingerella. It's obvious that you need to peel the ginger. You can't leave ginger with the skin on. After we clean the ginger, the things that we need to do is to slice it and put in a jar. Now we had another 500 ml of pure alcohol. And in this case, we will wait for three weeks. I think this one's going to be amazing. I'm going to use 375 ml of water and 250 grams of sugar. Like the limoncello, we need to let them rest for about a month. 
And our last liqueur is liquore al basilico because also basil is one of the most amazing Italian ingredients. And we can do a liqueur out of it. I'm going to use 80 grams of basil. Be sure that is organic, much better if you have your own basil. Wash it and then it's pretty easy because we will transfer the basil in a jar and we will add 500 milliliters of grain alcohol. What we need to do in this case is to press the basil so we are sure that the basil is all under the alcohol and we let it infuse for three days, four days. The basil is done infusing and I'm going to make the simple syrup with 500 ml of water and 350 grams of sugar. Whoa! That is green green. This is a very good green. we did for all the rest, we let them sit, rest until they are ready to be enjoyed. Oh, we finally get to try them. I think this has probably been the longest video to make we've ever done. Because we need to <laughs> wait the time months. that uh, they are ready. It's not that you can speed up the process. Actually, next week's video will be even longer. Not longer of a video, longer of a process to make. See, a little bit, yes. <laughs> I want to save. I want to save the basil for last because that one intrigues me the most. Should we so, try the coffee? No, let's try the ginger ale. Ginger ale. Because maybe it's the closest one to limoncello, and then we can change. All right. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I love ginger. Chin chin. Chin chin. Dang. Wow. That is for people like me. <laughs> if you like ginger, uh, see it. Wow. Uh, when I was a sailor, I used to really love very, very strong ginger beer. If I had this one kind from Maine that I just absolutely loved, and this is very much satisfying this dormant crave of mine. It's so, so good. It's like spicy, it's rich. Wow. At the beginning is uh, sweet, but then... But then you get that kick, be... yeah. Okay, I like that one. Let's try the coffee. Close to Ava's home in Calabria, they are like famous for their coffee liqueurs, and so I've come to, to very much like those, yeah. Okay, the smell. Chin chin. Chin chin. Oh yeah. If you are a coffee lover, this is made for you because this is too good. This would be so good drizzled on gelato. On a summer day when it's very hot outside and you want something fresh. That's probably, that's probably one of the best tasting coffee liqueurs I've ever had. Last, but certainly not least. Basil cello. Basil cello. This one I'm really curious to try. Disclaimer here. Don't put this on a caprese. Don't put this on pasta. Don't use this in your cooking. It's not meant for this. It's so cool, the color. I mean, I guess I should have expected it to come out so green, but it still surprised me nonetheless. This looks like it's artificially colored, but it's no, not. No, it's uh, basil. Yeah. The smell wow. is the smell of a basil. It's like a, wow. a pesto with alcohol inside. I'm not sure what this is going to taste like. Chin chin. Chin chin. Wow, 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 wow. That is incredible. I don't know how to describe. How can you describe? Well, I thought basil would be weird because it's essentially just basil, alcohol, and sugar. I thought that the sweet combination with the basil would be weird just because you don't normally see basil sweetened. 
It works perfectly. It's amazing. And I guess it also makes sense because a lot of the, uh, a lot of Amaro from Italy, the digestivo yeah, after dinner liqueurs, they made they're made with herbs. Rosemary and... Thyme, rosemary, sage. Actually, we do Amaro also out of artichokes. Basil wow. works very well. It has almost a mint taste. Without... It does taste minty. I, I think this is hands down the best one. And I also have to say, I think it's way better than limoncello. This, in between all, is the most surprise link because when you make you think about basil yes basil i think ultimately what's really cool is that if you learn this technique you can get really creative and you can kind of do this with anything you can do it with just about any kind of fresh fruit with herbs that you might have um, you can also mix and match hang on let me get something ava made this because we had some leftover alcohol and some of the ingredients it says picante because it's spicy this was made with lemon, lemon ginger, ginger and chili pepper so you can really do just about anything you want with this technique we hope that you guys give this method a shot and go try to make something let us know if you have any creative ideas. If you do, tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see what you come up with. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian who made the best pasta dish, the, no, the best dish that I've had all year thus far, pasta rumalu tempu. It looks amazing, so very good job. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Should we try the picante? Si, sí, albero. Wow. No, this is the best in between all. This is the best in between all. Maybe all limoncello should just have chili pepper. See? Si. Wow. See? Si. Look, we could start a company. Calabrian limoncello. And what do Calabrians do to everything? Nice, they add chili pepper. Calabria peppercello. Peppercello. <laughs>